This one, good morning, my construction entrepreneurs. Tyrone Jones with Construction Entrepreneur Services, school, uh, school and Services, where we help individuals start their business from getting their license up to actually growing and getting to different levels within their businesses. Uh, we do mentoring as well, um, and we just help increase sales revenue and, and, and implement systems to help you get better at what you do, okay? So what I want to touch bases on is the young, my young, young entrepreneurs that's out there that's like, you know what? I am going to start my own construction company. I am going to go for it. Uh, how do I go about going for it? And I give you a little bit about my story is I started out as a labor for a concrete company, a decorative concrete company. The name of the company was named Creed Art. And I didn't know anything about construction when I joined that company. So a lot of it was just brand new for me. Um, I, I really didn't know what I really wanted to do because I, I got out of jail, only had one other job before that. And I was just looking for something else to make me more money. That's what I was really looking for. And something else I can hopefully succeed in. And um, I was picked up and I started working and I really didn't give much effort into working at this construction company until one day we did this decorative job where we did a um, a porch. It was a, a porch in back of a house in, uh, in uh, Claremont, in Claremont, California. And we turned that porch, we made the concrete look like wood wood planks, right? The color, the nails, everything, right? With stamped concrete. And after that, I seen, I just, I just, I, I, I just seen the, 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 the artistic, like, brush in there, you know? And I, I just, like, it, it just made me jump on it and really dive into decorative concrete and learn a lot about it. And back then, Remember, there was no, uh, uh, there was internet, but you couldn't go on your phone or anything like that. So I used to go to the library and just look up books on decorative concrete, concrete, uh, uh, how to install it, businesses, all this, right? I just used to just look this stuff up. And that's how I was getting the knack for it, you know? And I was I was building that, that desire to get into this, you know? And um, eventually I started um doing more at that company right we were doing um we did decorative concrete and we did foundations right commercial maybe five percent commercial and 95 percent residential so i went out and i i took a took a took it up on myself to just learn everything i looked at it as if they were paying me to go to school so i started working with a guy we had on board a guy named dale and he's, he taught me how to read the blueprints and how to lay out the houses, right? How to square them up, you know, big houses too. How to square them up, how to lay out the, uh, the exterior, mark them and the interior footings and lay out the plumbing as well and the, the suite for the electrical, right? Oh, and I used to, uh, he taught me how to position the house. Now, the owners will say, hey, because these houses we were building, were uh, a lot of them were in Duluth, where you had to have a minimum of five acres. So you can literally position your house however you want it. So they'll tell us roughly how they want the house to be, but we will, you know, with with, with the final great grading layout, the corners of the house, you know, any edges from any uh, uh, walls or mountains, we gotta make sure that there's enough room to get by, get in the backyard, make sure there's enough room in the backyard. So there's a lot of little tweaking to make sure this house is sitting right. So we will position this house and lay out all the footings. And then I started digging the footings, started operating the back hole. And what I started doing is I will operate after hours. I'll stay there later, extra two hours, extra three hours free, just to learn how to operate this back hole. Operating the hole part, operating the bucket part, just getting real comfortable with it. To one day the owner was like, you know what? 
I want you, I want, I want, I want to give you a shot at digging out this house. And I go out there, and the first house I dug out um, took me a while to realize how to scrape at the footings and then dig down instead of just scooping. And when you scoop like that, and you dig deep, you just break, you know, upheave a whole lot more than just the footing. So I screwed up on my first, at least first two houses, you know. I was, it was always pressure in my head to, oh, you're, you're taking too much time, taking too much time. You need to move faster, you need to move faster. And I'll go and I'll start digging. There's times where I used to jump, I used to jump the footings and get stuck. You know, I jump electrical footings where I didn't dug, you know, a 300 foot, 500 linear foot footing and had to jump across it at some point. It was just, I, I didn't almost got stuck. I didn't, I have gotten stuck. Went back on a Sunday to, 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 to dig myself out, uh, learn how to do the repairs to the equipment as well. So it was a valuable time for me. I, I was a, a sponge and I just absorbed all that. So I was learning. And then while I was doing the, the, the hydraulics part of it, right, the backhoe, the equipment part of it, I was also learning how to finish concrete, set forms, uh, and to uh, 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 you know, after the after the excavation is done, how to set the forms, how to set what side of the full uniforms go on, um, and, and things like that. And it was just a, a time that where I just absorbed all that, which benefited me into uh, uh, scaling within that industry. You know that was crucial so if you're in a position like that and you're young you know and you know where you want to go and you're in the construction it, it, you can make a career out of this you know what if you don't what if you want to move up and go into management what if you just want to go up into unions what if you want to go up and be an owner there's plenty of room for opportunity but take the time to learn the craft you know get your hands dirty and if, 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 if you can excel fast in that, then excel fast in that. I'm not saying you have to stay in there for a year. I'm not saying you have to stay in there for two years. But what I'm saying is that develop that and, 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 and build on it, build at it. Because construction is a viable, viable business, right? You can, you can be an a, a, a engineer. Right, you can build up to be an engineer. That means you, you shouldn't be working out in the field at all. Uh, uh, you know, majority of that time is in school and then employment. Uh, you can be an engineer. You can be a superintendent. You can be a project manager. You can be a vice president. I mean, there's the position are endless, and they're and they're very. I was gonna say profitable, but they're they're very high high income generating positions okay i mean as a superintendent you can get paid you know for a good company that's that's doing well you can get paid anywhere from uh uh 70 to 130 you know at a at, at a good at a good construction company okay i mean uh, 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 definitely starting out in the union, you can start out at a decent wage, starting out in the union, literally anywhere for the construction industry. Depend on what trade would depend on that starting cap, you know? Um, I had <clears throat> one of my partnerships before in San Diego, uh, I was with the IBEW and everyone started out at, uh, 16, okay? Start out, brand new, no experience, 16 bucks an hour. Um, I was with another union. Um, I think it was the operators engineer. They started out. I, I want to say, I want to say 18. You know, I don't too much remember. Uh, labors were pretty high, so you know, you join the unions here. Uh, 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 it's great, great benefits. Uh, I was really never a fan of me personally joining the union because I had different uh, goals and, and, and achievements I wanted to reach but it's possible so learn that trade dig deep in there see it as if they're teaching you to go to school okay and then for you veterans that's out there always read about your trade always every day you need to be reading or listening about your trade every day articles stories you need to be on that about your trade learn what new technologies are out there about your trade 
grab hold of that information and see what you can apply to what you're doing now. And I'm talking about whatever you're foreman, okay? A working foreman, a general foreman, a superintendent, project manager, doesn't matter, you know? You are there to advance within your career, so you have to constantly feed yourself knowledge about your career because the industry is constantly changing and you need to keep up with it okay so i'm gonna let you go with that dig into the history if you're on that lower level be hands-on look at it a different way especially if you had that attitude that i had to where i remember <laughs> i was about to let you go but i remember when i was a labor and i used to shovel concrete and the owner, this guy named for Creedar, this Creedar company I was working for, uh, 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 I was shoveling, I'd be shoveling concrete and and we'll never get a pump, right? I mean, we'll never get a pump. We'll just tell the truck, like, run it fast and then just shoot down the chute and we'll try to get as far as possible and then we'll just shovel the rest. And he used to get these big gardening shovels, you know, those big aluminum ones so we can move a lot of dirt. We used to shovel. Well, shoveling concrete all day will wear you down. I remember he'll come on the job site and he was an old school owner. He'll cuss you out, all kind of, all kind of stuff, right? He used to snatch the shovel away from me. That used to steam me. And, and he'll do it when you're not even know. He'll walk up, you wouldn't even be paying attention. He'll snatch it away from you. Listen, you need to do it like this. Urgh. Move this mud. Move this mud. And I was like, you know what? Okay, yeah, I'll move it. I was like, but I can't. I can't move it like that. Like, 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 like for two hours, though, Joe. I, 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 I can't do it. I'm gonna try though, man. Move it, man. Let's go. Let's go. This mud waste for no one. So <laughs> it was, you know. And and I really had to. I really had to look at it differently to excel in that, okay? Um, I really had to look at it to, to excel in that. And and I really had to, once I decided to take it seriously, I really had to uh, figure out ways to to make this thing work. I really did, and, and I did. So that's my advice there is to, you know, if you're in the industry, you're brand new to it, uh, take it as a learning, take it as someone is paying you to learn and get all you can get and move up. Uh, with the with the, the companies I was with, I was able to jump into various different positions throughout the company. If you get with a larger type company, most likely you got to stay in your lane, you know, and that's what sucks about, uh, you know, joining large type companies that have uh, 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 strict or unionized divisions. You, you only can stay within that, but you can excel in that too. You just can't, you, you just won't have the opportunity to get several different type of trades up underneath your belt, which can benefit you in the long run, you know? So my construction entrepreneurs, hopefully you learned a lot from that. I'll let you go. Remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.